that, please um, keep the chat uh, safe uh, for yourself and not add personal information. So I see we've got uh, New Jersey there, United States. We've got Sean from, is it, I'm not sure. Um, Sean, if you could add where you're from, I don't want to make mistakes here. Uh, we've got Yemen. Feel free to add where you're from. Uh, Trinidad. I was going to say Trinidad, but I didn't want to make a mistake there. Uh, so, yes, we've got Hawaii. And it's 5 in the morning. My gosh. Do you realize that that's, um, well, 10 hours or something away? Um, so, Hawaii is really the beginning of life. Doesn't time start there or end there? I should say my daughter is in Hawaii right now on some island having a good time after um, the world uh, Iron Man, if you know what that is. All right, so this is Moodle MOOC 5, and we're ready to get started. Uh, we're into week three, and we've got the final week next week. So today's the day that uh, we start the blocks on Moodle, uh, in the Moodle training. Uh, Moodle MOOCs are both Moodle training sessions that take place for free for a whole month. And they're also um, presentations with amazing presenters who volunteer their time to talk about education and technology and how to combine the two. So this session is going to be from Sweden, so to speak, because the speaker is from Sweden. Uh, there she is on the top right here. And I'm going to pass on the mic to Dr. Ebba, who's going to be speaking right there. Uh, there is the session about online learning and learning analytics. Uh, Ebba is very passionate about sharing. She's involved in open education resources and everything that offers free learning online. So it's a great pleasure to uh, have Ebba with us. I'm not sure whether we'll get your, I believe your Webcam is not working, so I'm just going to pass on the uh, microphone and been with the support since lunchtime, lunchtime today. And um, yes, but now we are here. Uh, and I understood that you had a rather interesting discussion about uh, a book with with the name Wait. I think I have to look for that as well. <laughs> So um, thank you very much for the invitation to um, be a speaker here at uh, Moodle MOOC um, 5. I'm very happy for that. And thanks for the earlier introduction, uh, Nelly. Uh, I see that many of you are from, um, from I saw from Trinidad and uh, Hawaii and uh, Scotland. So welcome, everyone. Uh, just very brief about, uh, I have no video because the video couldn't uh, work, so I have just the sound. Uh, my speech would be about uh, learning analytics and online learning. And I have a PhD working at Lund University in Sweden. And I also work with some of the other universities here in Sweden as a consultant on um, online learning and uh, quality. I'm also involved in several uh, international organizations uh, on the topic of online learning and quality. Uh, for the moment, I work with an international, uh, as an, with an international research by ICDE, which is the International Council for Distance Education on the quality standard systems, uh, trying to see what is what is on and um, what to recommend member uh, members and also also what to recommend for you UNESCO and for OECD and uh, like in Europe, the European Commission. Uh, I also work on a, an, on a, as an evaluator for a project which is called Sequent in a European project with several of the large organizations um, here in Europe about quality in online learning. 
Uh, I'm very much interested in, in this uh, topic and uh, as you may know, learning analytics is very hot for the moment. So that was the reason why I used uh, this topic. Um, I'm involved in the most of the European associations on the topic about quality and online learning. And also, as I said, uh, the ICD. So here are just some of the abbreviations. I'm also involved national, at national level here in Sweden on the organizations working with it. Uh, I did my PhD about benchmarking e-learning in higher education, and that was uh, two years ago in Oulu, in Finland. So I'm very much uh, involved in this area. Um, so why is this important to talk about? Uh, because the number of higher education students in the world is expected to quadruple from around 100 million people in 2000 to about 400 million in 2030. And that is quite a lot. Oops. Something come from the support team. So um, uh, to accommodate, accommodate, accommodate uh, all those students, we need to build uh, quite many, I would say nearly 10,000 universities in some 30 years. And that is not possible. That means three universities for 30,000 students per week. And as I said, that is not possible. And also, uh, students expect to choose what they learn, how they learn, and when they learn, and also from where, as universities are available from all over the world for students nowadays. And that makes a difference. And also, we have uh, all kinds of social media. And as, for example, um, uh, Anka Mulder, who is the vice chancellor of, of uh, 12th University here in Europe, uh, in Holland, she says that uh, that is, I mean, that is true for all universities. This is just one example. She is very active in the area. Open and online education allows people from around the world access to the top education of universities. And of course, she promotes her, her own. <laughs> at 12th University. It enables everybody who wants to develop themselves and accommodate the increasing number of students seeking higher education. And that is why universities are so uh, keen to um, be on the front line uh, in this movement with online learning. So students can get world-class education uh, to everyone from everywhere. But how it is really Okay, we continue. So this is um, this is how it looks like at very many universities. Uh, indeed, that uh, we the real world uh, or the uh, the word everyone is talking about looks like uh, something else with online teaching and learning. So we have to do something, of course. Um, I think this uh, uh, slide with the time e-learning timetable is rather interesting because it says uh, something about the uh, different developments during the last uh, 30 years. But um, I will more like to stress the two last ones. The MOOCs came, Massive Open Online Courses, uh, in 2008. Something very interesting happened. And uh, you may remember that everyone was talking like it looks like a hype or looks like a disrupt disrupted education and a tsunami or a nice uh, mountain or uh, a lot of different wording. And also about learning analytics uh, came uh, two years later. And in the New Media Consortium uh, reports, which come every year, year uh, 
they have been talking about uh, massive open online courses and learn analytics since that time. And now we're in 2014 and still uh, some think is, um, we're not really prepared how to, how to deal with it. That is why I think this um, topic is very much of interest, how we can uh, talk about online learning and learning analytics and what we can learn and what we can do with it because it is time to act. Um, so John Daniel, who was the former president of the Commonwealth of Learning and uh, Stabenka Ovalix, um, uh, they wrote about uh, the, this report about AI to quality in post-traditional online higher education. And I think they have coined a new concept very uh, important to, to deal with post traditional online higher education. And with that I mean um, MOOCs and open education resources and this open movement which we are facing. And they say and they stress that we can't handle these new things in the old traditional uh, education model. Um, so they say, for example, it's time that we accept the challenge, this challenge and to recreate our institutions for service in the network lifelong learning context. Uh, they say also that the quality procedures for improvement aim at enhancing future performance rather than judging past performance. And they say also that grown disruption of higher education traditional business models, there is a steady move towards openness that is driving innovation and has the potential to create a new paradigm in higher education. And they say that uh, the biggest challenge in innovation is uh, envis envisioning a new paradigm and abandoning the old constructs. constructs. And this is uh, why uh, learning analytics um, has a role to play, I think to face all those uh, challenges. Um, just very, very brief about MOOCs because I think uh, all of you are familiar with that, but yes, uh, we are on the same kind of page. Uh, massive open online courses, at the, that means that uh, every single word in this uh, abbreviation counts massive because it's a large scale open as it's opened. You just need internet and uh, a device, it's online, and it is a course. And this is how Don, Stephen Downs uh, um, describe it. And quite often the uh, MOOCs are like uh, different learning units, and they're often like um, three to ten weeks. And there are sometimes uh, block, uh, learning blocks and learning activities, and they are very often with uh, text and discussions. I will not go that much into that. Um, and we also know that um, there is a lot of uh, students entering MOOCs, uh, but not that very, very many uh, when the course ends. And of course, uh, the MOOCs are also divided into courses and areas and to modules and program. And I think that is more and more uh, common that you have different kind of layers in the, in the MOOC. Some modules are totally free and if you like to have something extra, you have to pay for it. And also if you like to have a certific certificate, you have to pay for it. Uh, we don't know like... Um, Uh, like the Gartner hype curve that um, MOOCs are here to stay. Uh, as we said earlier, they launched in 2008 and the real bubble was in 2011-2013 and maybe now we are like uh, some kind of maturing uh, phase and we realize that there are different kinds of MOOCs and um, we, have, we also realize that MOOCs are here to stay in one or another way. And what is good with I mean, what is good with MOOCs is not just the MOOC itself, but also how we how we look at at um, other kind of, of education and, and learning, and how to we can learn a lot about that design and how to motivate the students uh, depending how the, the MOOCs are are designed. And we they also the Gartner say also that uh, 
MOOCs will grow in 2017 and to, 2000, to 20, 2020, 2030, it will just, um, uh, just increase. So we have to like very much. Um, so I think this is an important background and I have some more slides slides about us, that this because before we come to learning analytics and why that uh, matter. Uh, because we need to see what all this kind of disruption really means. Um, we know that the uh, disruption have taken place in music, in banking, in citizenships, and all these kind of things, but uh, not that far in um, education so, so far. Um, I saw a while ago um, how you can compare uh, innovation in, in education with uh, trans transporting, for example, coaches and cars and these things. Um, with the coaches uh, and the, when the, the cars was developed, we um, built new ways of uh, transport, new ways of networking, new ways of lifestyles, uh, new models uh, of the cars, uh, etc. And I think uh, this is a nice uh, comparison with uh, with education. Um, what does it mean for for online education? Uh, we started education on campus uh, quite often, yeah. and then it was more about the collaboration, and then the MOOCs came, and uh, um, we have different kinds of MOOCs, different kind of platforms, different kind of social networks, so the networking were, were um, spreading in different ways. And it also affected, affected our lifestyles as we get more and more mobile. Um, here's just a, again an, an example. Uh, uh, there are different uh, universities who are rather far ahead about uh, online learning uh, models like uh, Harvard and like uh, MIT, and, uh, just to mention some. And life is um, and education became more and more uh, diverse uh, with different niches and uh, again different kind of new networks and how and the individual is doing her or, or his own pathways in this uh, uh, in this um, new uh, learning situations. Um, Hmm. This slide looks a bit uh, strange uh, when it uh, appears here because the text is uh, very small, for me at least. Um, but what about, uh, um, I've just very briefly gone, gone through the development of MOOCs and that MOOCs is, is here. And here is why learning analytics uh, has become so interesting. Uh, as I said, uh, the New Media Consortium uh, raised the learning analytics already in 2011, that is um, more or less three years ago. And in each um, edition of their, their journal or their report, they mention learning analytics. So why has that been so um, interesting? It is for the because of the MOOCs, uh, because for the first time we have really large scale um, data and um, big data. Uh, of course we had lots of data before with uh, ordinary courses and also with ordinary online courses because we could track students, we could track courses, but um, it wasn't uh, scalable as it is now. And George Siemens, who is, was one of the founders of the MOOCs and also about learning analytics, he says that um, um, it is a field um, how we can deciphering the trends and patterns from educational big data or huge sets of student-related data to further the advancement of personalized supportive systems of higher education. And this is what everything is about. And 
we are all talking very much about personalization, personalized uh, education as the student, as the individual can take courses, uh, can learn from everywhere, from anyone, anywhere, uh, anytime, uh, the content is available and they can just choose what they like. Yes, a personal learning environment, as you say, Nale, uh, that is um, that is what it really is about. And uh, Steve uh, Wheelers, he wrote a very nice blog post, uh, I think it was yesterday, about everything is about you. <laughs> because it is you uh, who, who decide. And um, all that, that, that also means that we need to organize education in different ways. So we'll come back to that uh, again. Um, yes, why is it important for learning analytics? Um, we have uh, all those data, and that is really a mess. Either we can uh, can um, um, can see it like those uh, more uh, with somatic way and with a with a trade different threads, and it everything is like a mess, and we can't follow the the yellow or red or the blue one, for example, in the in the picture in, in the image uh, to the left. Or we can try to organize that, like uh, like we do in a garden, for example. And we can also um, treat the data and uh, cultivate the data, as we do with plants. Uh, this is um, an image also from George uh, Siemens. And he said that with learning analytics, we can uh, predict uh, a lot of things. And we can also uh, analyze and adapt uh, learning and teaching um, for the individual, like technological, like social, like pedagogical. Um, we can see the profile of our students, our learners. Uh, and also, uh, we can use um, learners, how they... they how they use the, the data for mobile, social media, personal learning environments, um, uh, LMS we are still using, and we can also predict um, how to, to design the curriculum and semantic data. And of course we can analyze all this kind of data for different kind of uh, purposes like uh, conceptual understanding, like uh, social network analysis, uh, what kind of impact it has for learning. learning. <laughs> and also to, to follow uh, the individual's um, own uh, learning pathways, both for failures and for success. Uh, in Europe, we have a, a pretty new um, project which is called LACE. It's about learning analytic community exchange, and that has grown uh, tremendously, I will say, um, and got a very nice uh, impact uh, in Europe. I don't know if you have heard about it. From, from the big data. And what kind of problems can analytics help to solve? And about uh, both for learners and educators, what can they gain? And also how can we use the, the analytics uh, for a positive change in the direction we would like to? Um, I will not go through this uh, slide uh, in total, but just uh, colored uh, squares. Um, this uh, says that <coughs> um, you can also uh, see it like this um, this image that uh, working with learning analytics is not just uh, the single teacher's uh, task. Uh, there are different kind of stakeholders. Um, there are different kind of competences. There are some constraints, of course, and there are different methods and goals and different kind of data. This is just to show that uh, working with analytics is rather 
complex, but if you do it in um, more systematic ways, you can uh, gain a lot from it. Uh, for example, for the learners, uh, they can uh, monitor their own activities and their interactions and learning processes. Uh, they can compare themselves with others. They can increase their awareness, uh, how to reflect and to self-reflect. Uh, it can uh, improve discussions and participation. And of course, uh, behavior and performance and, uh, uh, become a Password. Um, you can see the same from the educator, educators or the researchers. Uh, they can, for example, explore student data, identify problems, uh, discover patterns, uh, find early indicators for success or poor marks or dropouts. Uh, for example, with UCS, it used to be said that there is a lot of uh, dropouts and with the learning analytics you can maybe see what is the what is the patterns for the dropouts um, and map data you can of course improve teaching and uh, how to um, uh, facilitate resources and environment for for learners so academics uh, can also learn a lot by learning analytics and also the organization as such, diversity, or the universities, both at local and regional and national level. You can uh, uh, analyze uh, the students, you can more uh, make tailor-made tailor recommendations to customers, uh, like for example Google and Amazon and Netflix are doing, for example with uh, Booking.com. Uh, you have booked this hotel, and maybe you will be interested in this hotel as well. And uh, this is, goes the same for uh, for courses or for learning tasks. Uh, you have now, now done this course. Maybe you are interested in this course uh, also, or this can be complementary for what you already have done. So you can get more customized uh, recommendations uh, for the learners. And it can also be used for organization to allocate resources. Um, we need to also um, work more sustainable. I think, um, for example, in, in Sweden, we have just a big, a large investigation now that our universities really offering what learners are asking for. And I mean, that is really a task. <laughs> and um, uh, you can personalize learning paths. And I think learning analytics is very much about personalization and how to work with that. Um, here's again a slide about um, for who f who can benefit, I um, mean both, both the, on the departmental level but also the on course level. Uh, what make big is interesting to, to mention is that quite often we are talking about um, about um, that most focus about data has been for past and what has happened. Uh, what learning analytics uh, help us with is more to uh, prospect how we can do better things, how we can work in different ways, how we can predict things, so more for the, the present moment and for the future. Um, so we need to, to have uh, infrastructures and frameworks in place for, uh, for the work with learning analytics. And I think that, uh, and I will argue that um, universities have to plan and to um, structure their, their infrastructure for this new, th new trends. And the new trends is um, not just the, the learning analytics as such, but also the social learning analytics, including those uh, social tools, and also data from the physical environments. Uh, for example, uh, gestures and eye tracking and sensor data, which also play a role here. 
And all this kind of information can be used to monitor attention, engagement, and emotional, emotional state. So it's not just about fact and figures. Um, what is also important to, to argue about is uh, to involve learners in the, this process. And of course, they need to know how they should be labeled and how they can be part in this, uh, in this uh, big uh, new, new way of doing things. I think also at universities you may clear, clear the responsibilities for everyone who is involved because there are quite many stakeholders interested in this kind of big data which we now can, uh, can collect and can, can use. And also that maybe there need to be um, ethics committees uh, uh, and of course also um, legal uh, committees uh, and a lot of um, I mean, there, there are a lot of things uh, coming coming with learning analytics, so uh, it doesn't um, hurt the individual in uh, in any way, because the data is very sensitive. Uh, I will just uh, show that um, already Stanford um, had, had taken a huge leap forward with the uh, learning analytics and MOOCs, and they have a special um, homepage for that. Um, likewise, uh, Socrato, um, who also uh, works seriously about uh, unlearning analytics and MOOCs, uh, like this uh, cafe latte with a very nice uh, image of MOOCs uh, on the surface, but you don't really know what is this, uh, whether the, the coffee as such. <laughs> uh. I think it's a good image. Uh, edX has already, which is one of the platform for MOOCs, they have also um, uh, very seriously started to work with data and analytics and learning. I just those uh, pages because there is a lot uh, going on now on, on the area. And here is about uh, Sir John Daniel again, when he wrote uh, his paper on uh, muses in a maze or a myth. Learning analytics uh, required, of course, a lot of skills and knowledge, which maybe is not uh, so familiar to us, uh, to all of us uh, today. Uh, and I think also, if universities or different stakeholders really have to take this seriously, you really need to see what is the whole picture of it. For example, it's about very much about learning theories, uh, pedagogy. It's about the machine learning. It's about the uh, data visualization. Visualizing. It's about connectivism, um, um, social and semantic web. Um, yes, uh, just to mention some. But it is uh, you need to see it in in a, the whole picture of it. It's not uh, as I said before. It's not just about the uh, facts and figures and um, some st statistics. Um, but um, it is very much about learning design and uh, learning analytics. It, it goes together because from learn learning analytics <coughs> you can get a lot of um, uh, information uh, about how to how to design uh, possibilities for learning learning and for learners. It is like a virtual circle and how you can uh, stimulate and facilitate uh, learners' motivation. Uh, so again, I started to, to talk very much about disruption and uh, learning analytics and the CS work with that is really about disruption. It's not just about how many who are enrolled in the course and what they're doing and uh, if there are any drop dropouts or if students have passed or not. That's not a question any longer. Um, however, there are some um, uh, ethical dilemma on learning analytics. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> um, for example, um, as like in this image, uh, as I said, there are many stakeholders, and um, 
some at sometimes um, you know questions or issues are on each one's uh, table or chair. Uh, there is a risk um, that something falls in between. Uh, that's the reason why you need to have a holistic approach in it. And in the end of the day, it is um, about the individual. What can individuals uh, learn from it and how can learning be more facilitated, um, more effect, more fun, more... Um, sorry, that those uh, small headings are in Swedish. <laughs> I forgot to, to change it. But it's very much about the mobility, about uh, collaboration, uh, openness, uh, personalization and uh, about quality. And through learning analytics we can really learn a lot, a lot about how individuals are learning or learn or learning and how we can make it better for them uh, both for their for their um, study situation but also for society and the work in society as such. Um, I have uh, tried to follow the, the, the chat uh, in between. Um, I haven't really seen that many questions. Um, um, it was a, uh, just so from uh, Neves Torrance, her uh, point zero grade is what's needed now to use analytics to prepare online learning courses. Um, yes, I think it is very, very important that we we keep up with the uh, with the learning analytics because um, I see uh, so often that uh, when we're doing or trying to do new things, we are trying to do it from the old point point of view how we did it before, and trying to put it uh, like more or less in, in the same kind of frame. Um, but I will really argue that with learning analytics, uh, using it. Um, in a in a proper and serious way, we can uh, come up with a lot of new um, new ideas, uh, innovative uh, ways of doing things, uh, entrepreneurship, um, doing things. Uh,